Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part three of my electrochemistry discussion. And this is Dr. Rhonda Kofel from Calhoun Community College. In this section, what we're gonna look at are calculating these standard potentials from the half reactions in the electrochemical cell. And then we're gonna predict, are they gonna be spontaneous or not as written? And then we're gonna sketch the electrochemical cell. So the absolute tendency of a half reaction um, can't be measured. We, I mean, it, it, you just can't measure it, okay? What we can do though, just like we couldn't measure enthalpy, but we could measure changes in enthalpy, right? So we can measure differences in potentials. And so basically we're measuring those relative to another electrode basically. And so what has come from that is we, we had to have some standard to go by. And as you know, in the periodic table, a lot of things are based on hydrogen. It's the lightest element. And so our standard hydrogen electrode is what we measure everything by. And it has zero volts. Okay, it has zero volts. And that's just what we assigned it to be. Okay, so we would have some reference standard to um, to just go by, okay? And so as you can see, you've got hydrogen gas in here at one atmosphere standard, um, and then you've got a, an inert electrode, and that's how you basically make um, an, an SHE, and you buy these usually calibrated, okay? So the standard half reaction for H plus to H2 is assigned zero volts, okay? And then everything above that is more positive and everything below that is more negative, all right? And so it's just a frame of reference, the standard hydrogen electrode. And so we compare things to that and, and we have charts that do that. If the half reaction um, has a stronger tendency towards being reduced, it will have a positive value for its EMF. And if it has a stronger tendency toward the oxidation, it will have a negative value. And so all, H2 is gonna be right in the middle of this table. And so um, farther away you get from zero, the more positive or negative you are, the less likely or more likely you are to be reduced, okay? And so since the EMF of the oxidation should equal the negative EMF of the reduction, um, we, can, we can use the numbers just like they are written on the table. You don't have to do any kind of inversions or anything like that, okay? So if, if your half reaction has a strong tendency to occur, it's gonna have a large positive half cell potential. When you have two half cells connected to each other, like our thing here we've got, okay, the electrons will flow so that whichever um, half reaction is more likely to occur um, will flow. So if you have, you have an anode, which is where your oxidation occurs, right, and you have a cathode where your reduction is going to occur, then they will flow from anode to cathode. Now, if you've written it like that, all is well, okay? But if you wrote it backwards, then it won't go that way and you'll get a negative number instead of a positive potential. Under standard conditions, zinc, which is a positive 0.76, has, is more likely to occur than copper, which is a negative 0.34 volts. So zinc will be the anode. So whichever one is the most positive is gonna be your anode where um, oxidation occurs and so your electrons will flow from your zinc to your copper. So that's how you tell which direction it's gonna go by looking at your EMFs. So in, in order for these to be spontaneous, that is we can have a galvanic cell like this, um, there has, a bit, has to be a strong tendency for the oxidizing agent to be reduced, 
okay and the reducing agent to be oxidized so the higher on the table you are the stronger your tendency is to be reduced the lower on the table the stronger the tendency for the product to be oxidized okay so that's why we use this table all right and I know it might might be a little hard to read all this stuff but um, you could you can zoom in if you need to or um, usually I'm, I'm giving you some of these numbers if you have a textbook if you have the Naval de Tro textbook second edition um, it is it is in there it's table 19.1 so you can also look at it there or you probably could google it and find a copy of it on on the net quite honestly um, but notice weaker oxidize or, or reducing agent stronger reducing agent and here is your h2 which is zero all right so then you look and see if it's if it's higher then it's more likely to be your anode if it's less it's more likely to be your cathode because everything's just relative to your hydrogen okay okay so cell potentials are intensive properties what does that mean it means they do not depend on how much you have all right density is an intensive property okay it doesn't matter how much you have so what that means for us is when we're, when we're calculating cell potentials it means you don't multiply them if you have more okay so if you have three moles of something instead of one mole it still has the same cell potential with me okay and we're going by the um, balance chemical equations and all that so your cell potentials are going to be the same no matter what all right it's going to be the difference between the cell potential of the cathode and the anode so if you're if you are calculating these you're going to look them up on the table you're going to find the E0 for the cathode okay which which is like the product and the E0 of the anode which is like your reactant and so just like in most things it's final minus initial so the EMF of the cell is going to be equal to the EMF of the cathode minus the EMF of the anode so that's why if you didn't get really well how you could tell the difference between cathode and anode you need to go back and look at that stuff again because you got to be able to do that to do this next part so using tabulated standard electrode potentials that's that table to calculate the standard cell potential for this reaction occurring in an electrochemical cell at 25 degrees C. Now notice I said standard a whole bunch of times okay standard 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 so that means we're at standard conditions so we're at one molar um, aqueous we're at one atmosphere if it's a gas and we're at 25 degrees C okay so that's really really important to remember all right so we're going to calculate the cell potential the E0 of the standard standard cell potential okay and we use the standard potentials of the electrodes ie the um, the stand the standard potentials of the half reactions okay so in this particular one I have aluminum plus nitrate plus 4H pluses so I can tell already this has been balanced right so you, we're not having to do this from scratch because it wouldn't have waters and H pluses if it wasn't balanced because that's you know that's what it looks like after we get done all right so I don't um, so when I when I write this I'm going to use those okay and so um, I'm going to say okay I've got aluminum solid and that's going to AL three plus aqueous and I've got nitrate aqueous plus four H pluses going to NO gas plus water now right off the bat I'm gonna make sure I got all my um, states in here okay so right off the bat I'm 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 looking all right so it's been um, it's been balanced so I can I can tell how many electrons are being moved around 
So if that goes from a zero to a plus three, that means that I had to give away three electrons. This was in the other lesson, so like I was telling you before, if you're having problems, then, you know, go back and look at that again, because you've got to have those skills in order to do this. All right, and so then we've got, oh, NO3 minus, I knew I'd forget something, NO3 minus and four, and four H pluses, that's a total of plus three, so I'm going to need three electrons on that side. So I need to know that, and even though I'm going to cancel those out, I just need to remind myself, you know, how many electrons are flowing. That's a skill you're going to need later, okay? So I just pulled that out of the balanced chemical equation. Okay, but, so I don't have to have, so, so I don't have to have my electrons in there, but I do want to know, um, that three electrons were transferred. Now that may not be important in this problem, but it may be important later. So I just need to get in the habit of doing that. All right, so I'm gonna, um, I'm, so my overall reaction is the AL solid, the original thing, plus NO3 minus plus four, plus 4, H plus, giving me NO2, oh, NO gas, plus 2, H2O, plus AL, 3 plus. Sorry, I wrote it out of order. I know that freaks some of y'all out. Sorry about that. All right, gas, aqueous, aqueous, solid. Okay, this is, this is just the original reaction, okay? All right, as long as I got products and reactants on the right side of the arrow, it's all good, okay? So all of you people that, you know, like that to follow every single rule exactly, I'm sorry. Sometimes, you know, I get carried away. All right, so why did I write these, okay? Why did I write these? Because these are the ones that I need to look up what their E zeros are, okay? These are the ones I need, and I'm going to erase that just so this will kind of make sense, okay? All right, so I'm going to write my E zeros like this. So when I look on my table, I'm going to see that the EMF for the aluminum reaction is a negative 1.66 volts. And the E zero of the cell or the EMF of the cell for the um, H, the NO3, is, and that whole thing will be written on there too, by the way, um, is plus 0 0.96. So all I did was, I'm going to make you dizzy for just a second. All I did was I went back, went back to our chart somewhere there. I went back to our chart and looked those numbers up, okay, which is all you have to do too, because you're very welcome to use that chart. All right, and so I have, now I have the half reactions, and I have the um, E0 of the cell for each half reaction. And so now what I'm going to do, because I know that the E0 of the cell, the whole thing, is going to be equal to E0 of the um, cathode minus the E0 of the anode. So which one was which? So this, I, I lost electrons, oil, oil oxidation is lost, so that was oxidation, so that means that was the anode. And once I figure that out, I don't care about the other one because I know it's got to be the cathode, right? Okay, so I need that because I've got to know what order to do these in, okay? So it doesn't matter what order I write, write the um, half reactions as long as... I know which is the cathode and which is the anode. So this is the cath this is the anode and this is the cathode. All right, once I've identified that, the E0 of the cell is equal to a positive 0 0.96 volts minus a negative 1.66 volts and that is equal to a positive 2.62 volts and that's very positive and so that means that that will be spontaneous 
so and it will go and it will go I didn't read myself much room but the anode is going to be the aluminum right and the cathode is going to be the NO3 So by doing the numbers, looking at them, I knew this one was anode because it was the, the most negative. This one had to be the cathode because it was above zero and way above the negative 1.66, right? So that's how I knew cathode and anode. And then I've got to subtract the anode from the cathode and whatever I get, if it's a positive number, that means that it's going to be spontaneous. Aren't these fun? <laughs> All right, and there's your one to practice on. All right, so I've already told you kind of how to do this spontaneous, non-spontaneous thing. If the E0 of the cell is positive, then the delta G will be negative. Therefore, it will be spontaneous. If, it's, if the E0 cell is negative, then it will be non-spontaneous. Your delta G will be positive. And it usually, <coughs> notice this. Okay, that one had a positive E0 of the cell, which meant it was spontaneous. So the reverse of that reaction, not a surprise, is non-spontaneous because it would have a negative E0 of the cell because you just flipped it, okay, you reversed it, and when you reverse it, it's no longer going towards from anode to cathode, it's going from cathode to anode, so that would not be spontaneous. See how that works? All right, so this one's fun, and I and I don't have an extra um, practice on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work A, and then I'm going to let you work B, um, so that you know you'll you'll have something to to work on as well. All right, so um, without calculating the E zero of the cell, predict whether each of these redox reactions. Would, um, in, is spontaneous when the reactant products are in their standard states. If the reaction is as spontaneous as written, make a sketch of the electrochemical cell in which the reaction occurs. If the reaction is not spontaneous, write an equation for the direction in which the spontaneous reaction occurs and sketch this corresponding electrochemical cell. In your sketches, make sure to label anode, which should be on the left, cathode, and then the direction of the electron flow. All right, so without calculating the E0 of the cell, and I mean you can, but you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be able to look at this and tell, right? So in this, in, in A you're going to be, you have iron solid going to Fe2 plus aqueous, and you have um, Mg2 plus aqueous going to Mg solid. Now, it, it, when it tells you not to calculate the E0 of the cell, it doesn't mean don't look at the EMFs, okay? Because you, you need to know that, right? So, obviously, this was a 0, this is a plus 2, so you're going to have 2 electrons on that side, and you got to have 2 electrons on this side because that's a 0 and that's a plus 2, all right? So, we're, we're past that. We should know how to do that part, all right? If not, go back and check. All right. Okay. All right. And so we do that. And so when we look up the EMFs from the chart, we find that um, for this one, it is um, a negative 2.37. Woo, that's a, that's a really negative one. And then the other one is a negative 0.45. Right? Okay, so this one is much more negative than the other one. And so, do you remember what that tells us? That tells us that it's more likely to reduce. So, that means that this, the more negative one, is going to be your cathode. And this one is going to be your anode. Right? 
And so what it was asking is, is it, is it the way it's written? Um, and I mean, when you do this, you're going to see it's a negative number if you, if you did your E0 of the cell. Okay, but we're not supposed to do that. What we are supposed to do is look at that and say, okay, so this is saying that, wait, did I run them backwards? Oh, sorry. I was looking at my sheet wrong. My, I am so sorry. Here, let me, sorry about that. The E0 for the iron is the negative 0 0.45 and minus 2.37. Okay, and so the minus 2.37 is more negative, and so it is the cathode. I tell you, you just look away for, you know, one second, and all heck breaks loose. Okay, all right, now I'm good. All right, so this is the anode. Your iron and your cathode is your um, magnesium. I believe I got it now. All right, so cathode minus anode so it's still not going to go right okay so but what we're looking at is this was saying that um, the electrons would go from the magnesium to I mean no from iron to the magnesium so is that right or not so that's what you have to ask yourself is it as it's written would it flow the iron goes to iron 2 plus the magnesium goes to um, the magnesium 2 plus goes to um, the magnesium solid all right so does it or doesn't it well it's really written backwards as far as anode to cathode, right? This anode would not tend to flow to this cathode. It would go the other way. So this is not spontaneous as written. What the way it should go is, um, is the opposite way. And, that, and I'll show you. And so like you can look at it and see, um, your iron solid going to iron 2 plus, okay, which was the smaller one. So that can't be. So what you, what you see is that if you drew this, you would have the um, anode as your iron going to your cathode okay but it can't flow that way because of these numbers it can't flow that way all right and so and and also if you look at the e0 of the cell the negative 2.37 minus a negative 0 0.45 is going to give you a negative 1.92 volts right and that's negative, so that is not going to be spontaneous. So we know it's not going to be spontaneous as it's written. Um, and we also knew that because the cathode was more negative than the anode, and that can't be. So, I mean, yeah, the anode is more positive than the cathode is kind of is how you should look at it. Look at it reversed. Okay, so this is as written, and this is reversed. E0 of the cell. So this is the cathode minus the anode. If I reverse that and say a negative 0 0.45 minus a negative 2.37, that's going to be a positive 1.92 volt, and that would. So if we reversed the anode and cathode, then it would flow. So that's the whole point of this one. So work this one. If you want to use the E zeros to do it, it makes more sense, you know, to you. But the more positive one is going to be the anode, or you know, the least negative one. If you have two that are negative, so you do B as your practice. Okay. All right. That should be it.